Senator Ricketts. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here today. I want to start by talking about uh, the United Arab Emirates. As you're aware, in January of uh, uh, January 17th of 2022, the Houthi-backed rebels, or the Houthi rebels backed by the Iranians, launched uh, missiles and drones at uh, Abu Dhabi and killed three people, injured six others. In our visit there last month, the number of officials in the UAE treated this like their 9-11. Mm. They said those words specifically, this was our 9-11. And what they relayed to us was that they're unhappy with regard to the administration's response, that President Biden didn't call. There was a weak response from the United States. In fact, I think it was reported later that you later called Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed and apologized for not having a stronger response. And I can tell you, a year later, they are still very mad that if you did indeed call to apologize, it did not do the trick because they are still very, very unhappy. So instead of having the opportunity to talk about how we could strengthen our relationship with the UAE and how we might be able to uh, make sure that we've got a strong relationship versus the Chinese Communist Party, we were instead lectured about this fumbled in diplomacy. And again, this just leads to our allies in the region looking for other help. And we've seen that recently, for example, with what the CCP is doing. Obviously, we've all read the newspapers about uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran agreeing to establish diplomatic relations with the help of the CCP brokering that deal, which I think we all agree makes us look bad. So first of all, let's just start with, how did it happen that we didn't call uh, the Crown Prince and have President Biden call him. I, I don't expect that that would be President Biden who would be thinking those things up. That should, shouldn't somebody on his team be telling him, hey, you need to give uh, you know, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed a phone call? Uh, Senator, thank you. Uh, you know, in fact, I spent, um, not just on the phone, I spent uh, two and a half, three hours in person with uh, uh, Mohammed bin Zayed um, in actually Morocco. This goes back to last year. We had a very lengthy discussion about this moment and I agree with you that um, for our uh, Emirati partners and friends, this was a profound moment. And I certainly heard from him uh, what you just shared, the, the concern that uh, we had not adequately um, in, in engaged them. Now, I will tell you that I, other, counter, uh, other partners in, in the government, did reach out um, immediately to our, uh, to our counterparts, in my case, the foreign minister. Um, we, uh, if you ask the Secretary of Defense, he will tell you, tell you about the assets that we deployed uh, immediately to um, bolster uh, the Emirates' uh, security. Uh, he'll tell you as well that um, the technology that was used to shoot down uh, the incoming was American technology that we provided. Nonetheless, I I'm d deeply sensitive to the way this was perceived by our friends and um, you know, my own conversations with, uh, with MBZ uh, made it clear that we understood and that we would uh, be with them and, and stand with them against uh, threats to their security. Since then, we have been working on uh, negotiating a strategic framework agreement to, in very you know, concrete ways, address some of the concerns they have to answer some of the questions they have about their security. And we've done a lot of work on that and made, I think, uh, some very, very good progress. We've worked very closely together in building out um, an a the Abraham Accords. Uh, part of, uh, we started something together called the Negev Forum, along with, uh, with Israel, uh, with uh, Bahrain, uh, with Morocco, uh, with uh, Egypt, that we all took part in. Um, we put something together that um, I think is going to bear very good results, bringing together uh, the Emirates, Israel, India, and the United States, something we call I2U2, to jointly invest in infrastructure projects. And the first ones are going forward uh, in India. We've made clear that in terms of some of the weapon systems that they seek for their security, uh, we uh, are fully prepared to move forward. These are systems that they started to discuss uh, previously. They, they pushed the pause button. We said we'd welcome pursuing those conversations, including the F-35s. Um, so I think there are a whole variety of things that are going on in, in the relationship to demonstrate uh, the seriousness that we attach to the partnership and our commitment to it. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that, and it's an important relationship. So I encourage you to continue because I can tell you, having just been there last month, they are still not happy. This is still a very sore spot for them. Mm. There's more that we need to do to make sure we can strengthen this relationship. So, and, and I encourage you to figure out ways that not let this happen again to one of our key allies where if a call from the president is going to be important that, you know, I view this as the State Department and you as the head of the State Department's responsibility to make sure the president's informed about making these types of phone calls. 
Uh, next, I'd like to move on to uh, the effectiveness of the sanctions in Russia. Um, you know, early in February 2022, President Biden warned Vladimir Putin that he has never seen sanctions like the one I have promised to impose. And, and soon after uh, Russia's illegal invasion of uh, Ukraine, the West did impose tough san sanctions, including measures that included the removal of the Russian banks from the SWIFT uh, network, sanctions on Russia's central bank, freezing $300 billion of Russia's foreign reserves, among other things. And the expectation of this was that this would cripple the Russian economy. Uh, in April, uh, or the World Bank predicted by April 2022, Russia economy would be contracting by 11.2%. Um, the International Institute of Finance went even further, predicting the Russian economy would uh, decline by a whopping 15%. Instead, the Russian economy was weakened, but it certainly was not crippled, uh, having shrunk maybe 2 to 4% last year, much less than the 10 to 15% that people were predicting. My question is, you know, what did we miss? Uh, you know, first, the ability for Russians to sanction-proof its economy, as well as actions taken by the Russian Central Bank to implement aggressive capital control measures and interest rate hikes to prevent the collapse of the ruble. Second, Russia would still be able to sell oil that would have gone to Europe to countries like China and India. And in fact, Indian imports of Russian oil are up 400%, as you know. Um, and then third, the ability of Russia to circumvent these sanctions. Um, you know, for example, Turkish companies exported tens of millions of dollars worth of machinery, electronics, spare parts, and other items that Russia needs for its military. Countries that border Russia, like Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, have become primary importers of dual-use goods from the West and then reselling them in Russia. And this week, the New York Times reported that China has sold more than $12 million in drones for Russia uh, that they'll use in the war effort. So clearly we have to do better. So uh, in March last year, you said that Western sanctions are having a crippling effect on the Russian economy after a year of conflict in Ukraine. Do you believe that these are crippling? And if not, what do we, more do we need to do to sanction Russia? Yeah, thank you very much, Senator. Um, uh, two things on this. First, um, Russia did take extraordinary measures, for example, to prop up the ruble, uh, the expenditures from its sovereign wealth fund as well to make sure it was propping up its economy. That certainly had some effect on some of the macro numbers. But as I see it, the sanctions, the export controls are having and will have uh, an increasingly powerful effect on Russia's ability to prosecute uh, modern warfare, to develop its economy, to uh, progress in its technology, to uh, acquire and use uh, energy extraction technology that it needs, uh, to uh, modernize its uh, aerospace and defense sectors, all of these things uh, are being dramatically uh, undercut by the sanctions and by the export controls. Yes, it is finding some substitute parts for things that are being denied by dozens of countries around the world. Those parts are inferior. It's having tremendous difficulty in replacing the weapons that it's expending, particularly precision-guided munitions uh, in, uh, in Ukraine, actually replacing those, getting the parts to do that. Um, and a combination of things, along with the sanctions and export controls, including the exodus of nearly a million Russians, many of whom are the most educated, most technologically sophisticated. The fact that a thousand or more international companies have left Russia, don't want to do business there. Um, all of these things taken together, never mind the fact that uh, horrifically uh, some 200,000 Russians by public estimates have either been killed or wounded in Ukraine. All of these things will have uh, growing and powerful effects on Russia's ability uh, both to continue to have a uh, modern, uh, effective military and to have a uh, modern, effective economy going forward. Um, so I have no, uh, no doubt about the powerful impact so, of these so do we do, do we need to do more, though? Uh, we are working every single day, not just us, but in very close coordination with dozens of countries around the world. The European Union uh, has now um, uh, done, uh, I think, uh, uh, 10 different sanctions packages on Russia. This is something no one would have expected. Uh, we have uh, ourselves uh, continue to look at the different actors that we can go after, the different sectors that we can go after, to um, have an impact. And I think, again, you're going to see this increase in the planet. They are having tremendous difficulty uh, replacing uh, the equipment that they've been using up. Uh, and they are looking, at, you're right, they are Thank looking you. at different places around the world, but it's not at all the same as what they had before. Thank you.